Hi friends, today we are going to talk about incisions making for vacuum emulsification. The main aim of the incision is it should be astigmatic neutral and self sealing. The two prerequisites for good incision are tense or hard eyeball and sharp instrument. There are three types of incision triplanar, biplanar, and uniplanar. The triplanar incision is better controlled and wall action is better. So whenever you want to put PMMA IUL or want to do SICS, you should make a triplanar incision. Now watch the videos. Stabilize the eyeball by holding the conjunctivo tenans complex at the limbus. Then take sharp 15 degree blade and make a perpendicular straight cut at the posterior limbus which has to be 3 to 400 micron deep and after making this cut check it whether it is deep enough or not take a kitchen knife and start making pocket 3 to 400 micron deeps and the inner pocket has to be as wide as the outer pocket because of the curvature of the crescent knife, we need to tilt the crescent knife to the right and to the left to achieve a good white pocket in the central part. And once this white pocket has been achieved, we keep on going to the central part up to the 1.5 to 2 millimeter deep. And now inject a viscoelastic to delineate the inner lip and also to felicitate the putting of the keratotome with the side to side movement put the keratotome in and go up to the inner end of the pocket point the tip of the keratotome backwards to achieve the perforation of the anterior chamber once it has been achieved point the tip forwards towards the cornea side dome of the cornea to achieve the perfect inner line you can see that this is excellent incision and the posterior lip is slightly white which shows that the incision has been made at the limbus. Now we go on to a biplanar incision. In this again we make a straight cut with the sharp knife 3 to 500 micron deep and once this cut has been achieved at a posterior limbus without cutting the conjunctiva then we take a keratotome instead of taking a crescent knife and engage the keratotome and then stabilize the globe either by holding the conjunctiva or putting the forcep at the side port incision or grasping the side port incision. And once you are engaged, initially the tip is pointed according to the curvature of the cornea that is little forward. And once you are reached 1.5 to 2 millimeter deep, then point the tip backwards to achieve the perforation and again forwards to achieve the perfect tunnel. Once you have mastered the biplanar tunnel, you can go on to the uniplanar tunnel. But you can see this is a beautiful pocket has been created. Now we will be talking about the uniplanar incision, which is much faster, needs a sharp catotome, and you make the pocket in one go and this tunnel is usually used by the experienced surgeon and this causes the least astigmatism, least post-op irritation but it is difficult to make and not suited for SICS or for using the PMMA lenses. Now we will be talking about the side port incision. Again side port incision should be as peripheral as possible without cutting the conjunctiva and the tip of the instrument keratotome should be pointed towards the opposite angle or ciliary body. This should be a squarish incision but if the pupil is small and you feel there is a chance of a virus prolapse, this incision can be made little more central and this we are making it little more central nearly 0.75 millimeter in front of the most of the time where we make the incision. You can also use 
the 15 degree blade for making this incision but you should not put this blade completely inside the eye because then the incision will become too leaky and you have got to control it yourself and you need to remember that this blade cuts only onto the one side not onto the both sides if by any chance you have cut the conjunctiva like in this case the conjunctiva was overriding we needed to cut the conjunctiva so if by any chance you have cut the conjunctiva while making the side port incision or the main incision then the outer lip of the incision should not be covered by the conjunctiva because when the fluid regurgitates when the fluid is coming out it will cause a chemosis over there so now we are cutting this conjunctiva to prevent the chemosis and in spite of that once we start doing irrigation aspiration you can see the some amount of chemosis is developing on the inferior side nasal side of the incision because the some part of the conjunctiva is still covering the incision on that side but it should cause no problem to the patient so thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe our channel